I'm Dan Fouts. And I never thought I'd ever say, good job, John Madden. Good job, John Madden. Now, this is great. This is absolutely fantastic, and this is absolutely what Coach would have wanted. Aztecs in their jerseys, Chargers, players wearing theirs. I played quarterback for Don for nine years, and uh, I don't have to tell you all of all the great quarterbacks that he had, and I by far played the longest for him. Nine great years, so that makes me the luckiest of all the quarterbacks. But you know, I, I envy the Brian Sipes, I envy the Dennis Shaw, the Don Horns, because they got Don in his formative years and the great years here at San Diego State. And boy, did you guys win a lot of games and have a lot of fun. I salute all of you Aztecs that are here, and I appreciate you. You know, one life touches another, touches another, and touches another. And Don's life has touched all of us. In fact, he has touched millions. And today we celebrate that life. You know, you will hear the word, and you have heard the word thanks and friend a lot today. For today is a day of thanksgiving, a day of giving thanks to our friend, our mentor, our coach, our Don Coriel. And I want to thank Mike and Mindy for this honor of addressing you here today, and thanks all of you have worked so hard to put this event on. Uh, Big Ed White and his wife Joanne, Hank Bauer, <laughs> San Diego State, Bob Mooseberger, Dean Spanos in the Chargers, Bill Johnston, the Hall of Champions. I know I'm leaving some of you out, but believe me, I appreciate how important this is today. And it's really the importance that Don placed upon friends and family and relationships. And isn't it great that he and Elisa are reunited again? Can't you just imagine the two of them trekking somewhere in the heavens, hand in hand, free of walkers and wheelchairs, racing along the clouds at breakneck speed? What a tremendous life example those two have given all of us, true partners, true companions, and true lovers. Just Don and Booty. <laughs> now, Mike touched upon the Booty story, and Jer my wife Jerry and I were visiting with Don and Elisa up in Roche Harbor. And, uh, you know, Coach had a little bit <laughs> of a speaking deal there. Uh, and. We kept hearing him saying, how, how booty, uh, let's get us some more wine, will you, booty? And, you know, <laughs> yeah, booty, get us some more wine, will you? <laughs> and so Jerry's just the sweetest person in the whole world, and she said, Coach, are, are you saying booty? <laughs> oh, hell, uh, it's, uh, one of the kids, uh, Kelly or Cutter or Al uh, Lonnie, Hey, hey, couldn't Moody? It's supposed to be Moody. It's German for mother or something. And hell, I, hell, I, I, you know, I just call her Booty. <laughs> well, the word friend is a word he could pronounce very well, and that's really how he would like for us all to remember him, just as our friend. And isn't that rare? You know, the football players in attendance here will attest to the rarity of that. Whether you are a lowly bench warmer or a star quarterback, a graduate assistant, or an offensive coordinator. Don thought of all of us as his friend. And we just heard of, from one of them, Jim Hannafin, obviously one of his longtime friends. And, and I so often have asked about Coach and why was he so successful, what made him so unique. And the word simplicity comes to mind. Not simple, but simplicity. In his system and in his approach to his coaching staff, the way he taught them to teach us and the way he coached us. My first uh, two-minute drill with, with Don is when the quarterback goes over to the sidelines at the end of the first half and he's standing there and 
it's very important that, you know, he's getting the plays that they're going to run. And uh, Hannafin is on the headset, and he's talking to Gibbs upstairs. And Zampezi's sitting upstairs next to Gibbs. And, uh, the, and uh, Hannafin is relaying the message down to me. And, and he says, uh, OK, between puffs of cigarette, of course. He goes, all right, uh, uh, dangerous. Uh, we're going to run. He used to call me dangerous. I don't know why. Uh, for, <laughs> It's because of all those interceptions I threw, but... Uh, <laughs> all right, we're going to run uh, 844 Ricky, okay? Now, this is what you do. You look for Charlie on that skinny post. If you get the ball in over the linebacker's head, hit him on that post. But if it's taken away, they rotate that way. Look for Kellen on the crossing route. Now, at the crossing route, the middle linebacker gets back into the crossing route. Then you got J.J. on the, on the dig route deep there. Now, if the strong safety takes that away, then you got Capaletti sneaking out in the flat, and you got Muncie in behind him on the, on the Ricky. You got that? <clears throat> so here I've got, I've got all these things running through my mind. I've just heard from Coach Hannafin. Joe Gibbs has sent this play down. Zampezi was helping him up in the booth. And I haven't heard from Coriel. So I'm running back out to the huddle because the referee says, OK, time to go out. You know, let's go. Hey, hey, in play. And, and uh, I get this tug on my jersey. And I turn around, and I don't see anybody. <laughs> and I, oh, there he is, you know. <laughs> and he says, ah, oh, screw all that, Danny. Just throw it to JJ. <laughs> You know, another word that uh, I really think best suits his coaching style was how positive it, he was with all of us. And, you know, there were times when I would start a game and that first one would be in the first row of the stands and the second one would be incomplete at the dirt of somebody else and then uh, they bring the punt team out. And then we get the ball back and first ball I throw is intercepted for a touchdown the other way. And, and uh, I'm sitting over on the sidelines and I, my head's swimming, you know, I, oh boy, I can't hit... He comes over and says, yeah, you all right, Danny? Huh? And I said, gee, I don't know, Coach. I can't hit the, I can't hit the barn today. He says, well, hell, Danny, you got 40 more throws to go. <laughs> I didn't say 40 more interceptions, though. <laughs> but very positive. But... The one thing that uh, uh, I think it was uh, Coach Hannafin touched upon a little bit is about how he hated, and Coach Gibbs too, yeah, he hated his opponents. But he saved, he saved his most hatred, <laughs> unfortunately for you guys, Coach. <laughs> oh, the Raiders. And one of, the, one of the earlier speakers talked about Saturday, Saturday night meetings and how, how great they were, and they were great, um, because Coach would, we would have our walkthrough on Saturday morning, and then uh, he and Elisa would have, head up to Mount Laguna and uh, hike around and then get really thirsty. And so he would, <laughs> and so he would, he would come to our team meeting at 9 o'clock, and, and we, were, we had been pretty thirsty at dinner, too, so... Uh, <laughs> We were ready. And this was our first game as, with him as our head coach, and we're playing the Raiders. And the Raiders always, you know, they killed us, and they were so good. And coach was so great. They had so many great players. And, and uh, Coriel could sense that we were, uh, you know, scared to death. We're going to get our ass kicked again. <laughs> and so he reaches in his back pocket, and he pulls out the Raider media guide. And he goes, I want to read some of this to you guys. He opens up the first page and he goes, Commitment to excellence. <laughs> Pride and poise. <laughs> Who the hell they think they are? And I got to tell you, our reaction was just like yours. <laughs> but it got better because he opened the first page, or no, it was the first page, it was about 
I think you were down in the fourth or fifth page, Coach. And he goes, hell, let me, look, John Madden. <laughs> hell, I used to take him and the garbage to work every day. I think we won that game. Yeah, I think it, it was JJ rolled around and scored a touchdown and over. It was great, you know. But now, as for the Hall of Fame, as Coach said, we're there because of Don. There's no question. I would not be standing here today if it wasn't for Don. But don't worry, he'll get in. The voters will get it right. And. Wouldn't it be great if we could have this type of celebration, this type of feeling, and move it to Canton, Ohio one day and celebrate him? <laughs> but you know, more than the recognition, the recognition in the Hall of Fame, it's the life that Don led, how he lived, the people he touched, and the extraordinary memories and feelings he leaves us with. That will be his legacy. Having known Don Coriel makes us all better people, and we must strive to emulate him, his spirit, and emulate him in our own lives, and share it the way Coach did every day with everyone he met. That is what is right, and that's what he would have wanted. Coach, we love you. We thank you, my friend. And even though you have taken our breath away, you may have taken your last breath, but you will always be in our hearts. We love you. Thank you. Thank you.